In this example, you can see how we can edit a piece of content on one website and then publish it to another website, even if that website is on a different domain. So I'm gonna go and create a piece of content called French language test, and I'm gonna save that. You can see that I'm editing that on a site which has a .co.uk domain. So I save that for the French language site. And now I'm gonna go and have a look at the French URL after I just copy that URL stub. So here's the French site. Now you'll see that actually it shows access is denied. That's because I didn't actually publish it back on the original site. So I'm now gonna go back to the UK site, publish my content, and then go back to the French site, refresh my page, and then you'll see that that content appears. common requirement in client briefs is to be able to have a CMS that enables you to build microsites or to run multiple sites all under the same instance of a CMS. There are a couple of ways in which this is achievable in Drupal. There's the multi-site functionality and the multi-domain functionality, but to be honest you don't always need to go that far. On ITB we've enabled functionality that allows editors to be able to create different backgrounds and different colour schemes for various programs and that they can change this all within the back end. You can see these being demoed here with the four main programs that feature food on ITV's channel. In the back end the way these are accessed is that colour schemes can be created and can be applied to different main sections across the site but colour schemes can also be created on a program by program basis as well. You'll see that once a palette is defined it can be given a name and then that palette can be applied to any relevant page. When you then go to the program page, you simply scroll to the relevant section, select the opportunity to change your current background, and also to be able to select the colour scheme that you want to apply to that section. This is an example of some advanced Google Analytics integration using Google Analytics and Tag Manager. On this site, we have a store which is served by a third party embedded with iframes, so we need to be able to track analytics cross domain. We also want to have a goal which tells us how many people have signed up to the newsletter that we collect email addresses for on this site, and it would also be useful for us to have a look at how well users engage with videos that we've got on the site. So going into analytics, you can see that we've got several things set up. We can see how much money we've taken through e-commerce across a variety of different products that we have for sale. You can also then have a look at the goals that we're tracking. We've got goal completions for newsletter signups and for videos. And then we can also go and have a look at the videos that we are tracking as events. So as part of events, we're tracking videos, we're tracking downloads, we're tracking mail signups. If we go and have a look at the videos, you'll see that each of the videos has got individual stats collected for it. So looking at the event label, we can see the names of all those videos. And if we click on one of those videos, we can see how much of the video users have watched. This is an example of how Drupal handles version control. So I'm going to go in and edit this page on backpacking and independent travel in Fiji. So I click on my edit button, go down to my body copy, just select the whole of that paragraph, copy it into my clipboard, paste it underneath. Now I'm going to go up to revision information select the checkbox to create a new revision and then type in a log message which tells me that I've created some longer copy. I'm then gonna go and save that. Then when I view it on the site, you can see my extra paragraph has appeared there. So I now have a look at revisions and you can see my revision at the top of the page with the note that I made. And I'm now gonna revert it back to the previous copy that I had, which had shorter copy on it. So I do that 
and then I'll go and view that page again and then you can see that I've got the previous version before I did my edit. We're now going to have a look at how you can search for media using Drupal. So I'm going to add a new gallery slide to my gallery and to do that I'm going to select a new image and you'll see that I can either select an image from my local file system or from the web or from the library. So if I'm going to select it from the library, first thing I'm going to do is select it by a tag. So this is really like a folder system where I've got all of my images tagged. So there I am searching for images that are tagged with Adelaide and I'm going to filter that further by searching for the word ocean and I've got one file with ocean in it that has the tag Adelaide. This site also uses editorial workflows so I've got my own dashboard in which I can see content that I own, content that I have in draft, content that I've submitted for review. This is an example of it being able to edit content in the front end. So here I am, I'm not looking at the back end at all. I've just selected a bit of content in the front end. I've gone in and edited the text and saved that. And that's now published live on my page. The student room portal uses a range of different technologies to provide a service to its users. Drupal is used in a decoupled way as content management functionality. So here I'm going to log into the student room and there's a single sign-on application that allows me to also log into Drupal at the same way. So here I am logging into the overall student room portal. But what I'm now going to do is invoke some content management functionality but the clever thing about this is that that content management functionality is available to users in the front end and it's also been styled so that all the error messages that appear actually kind of appear in the brand of the student room so what you'll see i'm going to just create an article and um, i'm going to let the form validation do its work so i'm not going to enter any content at all i'm just going to click save as a draft and you'll see that the error messages that i've got match the style of the page so there's two errors at the top and then I've got my relevant errors underneath each of my form fields. This is an example of how we can publish content to two separate places. So the CLPE website is a collection of different services offered by CLPE. I've got this book available on the Power of Reading website and it's also available here on the Core Books website. So if I go and edit that bit of content, you'll see that I've got all the content there for core books, which is a primary piece of content. And within that, I can add my authors and my publishers. I can go in and I can add various tags to the content. I can associate bits of resources with the content, so downloadable PDFs, etc., etc. I can relate books to that content as well. But then also on the Power of Reading site, I can either use the same content or I can add separate content for that particular area of the site associated with completely different resources and categorise it in a completely different way. But ultimately, it's one piece of content and I can choose to push it out to two separate parts of the site, which are in effect two different sites. In this example here, you can see how I can set a scheduled start and end time for pieces of content. Finally, you'll see on this page, we have a collection of widgets down the right hand side of the page. And those widgets can be pulled into the page by referencing them in the back end. Widgets could include dynamic content, or it could be content that is managed editorially. In any case, every bit of content that references that widget will pull it in. And if the widget is updated, then all of the pages that reference them will be updated as well.